Woo -hoo -hoo. Yo, uh, I wasn't even supposed to be doing this video. Um, <clears throat> I'm actually supposed to be starting to try to do some cardio here in a minute. Y'all have probably noticed that my face is getting thinner. You don't see my body, but yeah, I've been starving myself. <laughs> yeah, just trying to, I've actually been fasting and drinking a lot more water and dieting like I'm supposed to. It makes me feel better, more energetic. Um, just a part of the process. But anyway, uh, you know, I had a question come in. I got a million questions. So y'all gonna notice the rest of this week, it's gonna be a lot of videos. It's, it could be upwards to like 20 videos this week. And a lot of that's just stuff I held back. And you know, I just, y'all know. But, uh, and that's the same thing with the program. Uh, you know, the, the program this week, y'all gonna get like 15, possibly even 20 videos. Uh, and I'm reaching back out to everybody and everything. And these these videos, y'all y'all will notice a change when I start feeling better, a lot more energetic, a lot more focused, a lot more, you know, not drinking <laughs> during the video. But um, <clears throat> check it out. Now, the question that was asked was, was plain and simple, you know. Um, with me being, you know, and I thank you for the compliment, one of the pioneers and basically having uh, my own blood, even though it's not bloodline, what is, what is the biggest mistakes that I believe that people make? And um, I'm gonna tell you, I think it's somewhat, uh, I don't know, sometimes it's vanity and sometimes it's just stupidity. But this is why I say this, man. Um, and sometimes it's just people trying to experiment and don't know. So let me put that in there too. Uh, but this is my thing, right? When I uh, get into any kind of dogs, like I, I, I'm dealing with a brother in Serbia right now with my Dobermans and getting a plan together, uh, you know, on how I'm gonna go forward with it, that to, you know, to recreate what he's doing over there and continue what he's doing. So I understand that he has the key to his blood and I, I don't waste his time or anything like that. We get into good conversations and I'm just like, you know, how are we going to do this and that and the other, you know, and, uh, you know, really put me on solid ground here. You know what I'm saying? Because I love what he's doing there. But the one thing, whether it was that or whether it's my guy with the Roddies, I always, you know, reach out. I always try to see what they're doing. I always inquire for the knowledge. I never guess on breedings like, oh, yeah, this would be good. This would be good. And and I think that's with my blood. And I'm just speaking for myself. I see people do breedings with my blood. And before the breeding is even, I, I can already tell you that breeding ain't going to be shit. You know why? Because... I have a wealth of experience on my own blood and the things that I've done with my, you know, the things that I've seen done with it, the things I've done myself and the understanding of the different bloods that, that go around the American bully community. So, you know, one of the things is that it's funny because generally, you know what I mean? Like I say, everybody in the bully world wants to make their own mark so badly that they, a lot of times feel like that they have to do something new. Like, I'm going to put this together. Ain't nobody never put it down like this before. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But that's not really the way dogs work. Uh, that's not really the way breeding works. You know, in breeding, the most important thing that you can have is consistency in your program. And y'all have heard me say this before. You want to be able to tweak small things and, okay, I got a certain look, you know. So once I have that look, if I recreate that look, I didn't fail. But it, you know, but it still keeps me in the ball game to say if I wanted to go and tweak that look to make it a little bit better. I'm I'm in the ball game. Where I fail at is when I put things in there that will dramatically change the genetic makeup and sometimes the phenotype of what I'm trying to do. Because many times we think of this shit as like, oh, I can, uh, you know, we always call it the outcross. I'm gonna go outcross and I'm gonna take it to this random ass dog and we don't fully understand all of the things that that dog brings to the table. Now, it's not to say, let me put this the right way, that uh, what it's bringing to the table is a totally negative thing when you look. You can look at a pedigree and see a bunch of beautiful dogs, but do you have an understanding of how those dogs mesh with the blood that you currently have? And I have some people who have my dogs that are very much line bred, and I know their pedigrees left and right, and I see them doing the breeding, and I'm like, that shit ain't gonna work. 
because I've seen it done before. But the thing of it is, is that very few people totally research a breeding. They find a dog, hey, I like that boy. I like how he look and this, that, and the other. Let's put them together, you know? Not even truly understanding the way that the genetics work on the dog, not going the extra mile. And sometimes it takes work. You know what I mean? When you're doing a breeding, if you can't tell me, okay, about going back three generations, if I ask you, well, what about the great grandmama? Oh, I don't know too much about that dog. What about the great grandfather? Oh, no. what about the grandpa? Well, oh, yeah, that was Remy. What about the other grandpa? Well, oh, I don't know. He was some old school blood. You have not done proper research and you definitely don't have an understanding on the way your dog is bred. This shit ain't no game, man. So many people nowadays, especially in this bully world, call themselves breeders, but they lack the true knowledge and uh, and drive to, to be the scientist that you need to be a breeder. You know, too many times we put the label on somebody as a breeder because they let two dogs fuck or they go and do a, oh, excuse my language. But they, you know, but they, they <laughs> y'all know what I meant. I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, they, 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 put, they mate two dogs so you feel like you're a breeder. No, you're not a breeder because a breeder can intensify the conversation to a point that it starts to sound like he's a true scientist. He can tell you the genetic makeup going back those generations and the direction that he was going in and why he put these two dogs together. Not because these two dogs looked good, but you know what? This is what complements this. The great grandmother, she was this and this and this. And I know that she had some, uh, you know what I'm saying? Some negative traits on this side. And this is why I avoided it over here, but she did have positive traits on this side which also the previous breeding that made the mom, they merged these genes together to, uh, to uh, you know, accentuate those dominant traits and keep the other traits recessive. And this is why I'm doing this on this side to do the exact same thing, to accentuate those genes and not bring any of the old recessive traits out. Now, I made that simple, and it might not have sounded simple, but this is the way they can break it down. I can tell you how I'm avoiding bad hips. I can tell you how I'm avoiding uh, uh, bad top lines through generations, not just one dog, but through generations. Because if you say through one dog, you're not accounting for the dogs that's behind him. Just because he has a beautiful top line don't mean that grandma's top line is on point and don't mean that she don't throw him. So on the opposite side, if you double down with two dogs in the pedigree within the first three generations on a bad top line, it don't matter that all the other dogs got great top lines. You have just made a gene that was somewhat recessive now and not showing up in the phenotype a lot stronger and a higher probability that it's gonna show up in your breeding, but you can't explain that because you didn't do research. And you're not understanding that you're putting two things together. I explained this to y'all before. A dog that I don't like, Dax. A dog that I do like, Remy. Remy, if you looked at Remy, right? If you look at Remy line dogs, beautiful. A lot of them have very, very beautiful top lines. A lot of them move very well. So to the, um, let's just say, naive mind who hasn't done research, you would look at a Remy dog and you'd be like, it's a great idea. Remy got that true American bully look. You know what I'm saying? Got, um, uh, Dax is gonna bring that extra bulliness to that already pretty Remy line. Look, Remy gonna clean up some things. And you know what I'm saying? You gonna make some badass dogs. Remy line, beautiful ass dogs that's even bullier with that Dax neck and, and his shoulders and it's gonna jump. It all sounds good. But what you forgot is that not only did Dax have bad hips and throws terribly bad hips, Remy's father, Blue of Ruckus, had some of the worst hips probably in American bully history. You just doubled down on a terrible gene, and it's a very, very high probability that if not every dog, the grand majority of all dogs that you produce will not only have a dominant gene to produce almost deadly bad hips, and, and I'm talking about deadly bad because I've seen it happen with Dax. I've told y'all about that, and I've seen it happen with Remy when they bred him to the wrong thing. But you put this together, it's almost guaranteed. You went off of everything else, but without proper research, you didn't know that you just screwed your whole fucking litter over. And if you had planned on putting them dogs in your program, now you made super, uh, super bad hip dogs that it would take you three or four generations to breed out. That's why you study.
That's why you study. And it's not just about the bad hips. It could be hearts. It could be a heart issue. It could be a feet issue. It could be a lot of issues. That's why this shit is a science. Every breeding, if it's a true breeder and he wants to talk to you about a breeding and break down the breeding and the direction of the breeding and the dogs that are behind the breeding, he, he probably can talk to you easily for a half an hour about the breeding. But really, when you get into to, to some of these guys who go deep in detail for you, they'll have you on the phone for an hour, hour and a half talking about one breeding and why and why it went in there, going into the history, telling you, well, you know, this dog's dad was this and this, and he goes back to this, that dog had that, that dog, and you're going to get a lesson. But see, knowing is growing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Preparing is succeeding. And the thing that the reason why we see such insufficient dogs and, and the can't right can't get right type of community where even the dogs who do look good still have issues behind them. And we don't know how to totally get rid of these issues is not only because we're not selective enough, but at the same time, we're not prepared. We don't even understand what we putting in that pot of the gumbo. We don't know what we're doing. This shit is a science. And I'm, and I'm urging anybody who call themselves being a breeder get scientific get scientific fast if you care about what you're doing but with all that being said man it's uh, hopefully i'm back <laughs> i feel a lot better y'all and uh i thank god for that i thank god for y'all love and y'all support um i look forward to moving and shaking man it's been a long it's been y'all think it was just these couple months man it's been a long probably eight nine months going back a couple of years it's been constant but these last probably six months have been something special you know and uh i know somebody said it seems like you always got somebody passing in your family i'm gonna tell you all a secret uh <laughs> my grandfather my, my my mother's father uh this dude had 39 they say possibly 40 kids i say if you didn't have 39 that 40th one is yours and they probably don't know about five or six more but we do know about the 39 for sure so i got man when i tell you i got first cousins it's a couple hundred of us you know because my family we reproduce y'all see i keep on having kids so <laughs> so yeah we got a huge family so it is seems like it is always somebody leaving it. and just having a huge family it don't make it hurt any less or whatever but we got to deal with this so i say this in closing after this video you know what i mean god bless all y'all if any of y'all is going through anything man you know um keep on praying man and keep your spirits uplifted you know things gonna be all right until next time much love y'all peace